Hey, everybody. How you doing? My name is Bernie Burns, and I don't know if you can tell by the look of me. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I started my company, Rooster Teeth, back in 2003 in a spare bedroom. It was me. It was a few of my buddies, and we were making videos to make our friends laugh. But it's grown uh, to have a staff of, as of last week, 120 people. Um, we make about 40 different shows every single week, including Red vs. Blue, which is the longest-running web series in the history of the Internet. We just wrapped up our... Thank you. It's only because they can't cancel you on the Internet. You just have to give up after a while. We refuse to do that. But we just wrapped up our 13th season. Uh, last year, we made a bunch of headlines uh, because we crowdfunded our first feature film, Laser Team, uh, and we shattered the records on Indiegogo. Our audience raised $2.5 million uh, for us to make the movie, and it's coming out later this year. We also, thank you. We also have our own conference in Austin, our own fan events, a lot like VidCon, but it's focused a lot more on Rooster Teeth and gaming in particular. Um, it started as a fan event that was 500 people that just gathered basically in a field by our office for a weekend. And uh, last year it was 33,000 attendees and we're expecting 40,000 this year. And we just announced the international edition of RTX, which is RTX Australia, which we're having in Sydney for the first time ever, January of this coming year. So we're really excited about that. Anybody here? Anybody come from Australia? Right here? So you screwed up. You should have waited. Could have, could have saved 2,500 bucks on a ticket here. But uh, it, all these things are basically, this is my like, minute-long briefing of what Rooster Teeth is. And you know, it's basically a minute-long excuse of why Hank invites an old grumpy prick to come talk to a bunch of millennials, is what, what it means. But I love VidCon in particular because VidCon is such a unique environment. It's one of the few places where you can go to an industry event and literally the entire industry is there. Like at the hotel next door, it's three floors of the top creators across the globe and they're all there. And it's a great chance to collaborate, talk with people, see what their challenges are because we all face the same issues. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today because I think established creators and new creators, how many of you are creators in this audience? Wow, a ton of you. How many are just people who like online video, just watch online video but don't make anything? Oh, very few. How many are brands? Great, give us money, thank you. Um, <laughs> so one of the challenges, I think the biggest challenges we face is this number right here. It's the number 400, if we can bring it up on the screen. 400 is a number that was said by the CEO of YouTube when she spoke here this week. 400 is a very daunting number. 400 is the number of hours of content that are uploaded to YouTube every single minute. And that means if you wanted to watch every single video on YouTube and you sat down to do that, you would fall two and a half weeks behind every minute you tried to do that. It is an incredible noise floor. And I think that one of the biggest challenges we all face these days, both established creators and new creators, is the problem of discovery. So I asked a lot of the new creators that I talked with this week at VidCon, I asked them, what are your biggest issues with starting a channel, specifically in regards to discovery, getting people to find your content? The big thing everyone always says is, I don't know how to get started. And I'm not gonna talk a lot about that today because I think that's the subject of just about every single VidCon panel and talk, is make genuine content, be engaged, be consistent. Quite frankly, you gotta have those things. That's the ticket that gets you into the game. But I heard some things like this. I feel like I'm too late. I feel like some big window in history has passed and I'm just too late as a new creator. I'm too late to this game. Likewise, I feel like everything's already been done. You know, if I'm a gaming channel and PewDiePie has 40 million subs, who's gonna wanna watch my new gaming channel? They've already seen that. And then of course there's more traditional answers like I'm a huge fraud and people are gonna figure that out. No one will like my contact and I'm gonna be hated by everyone and die alone and unappreciated. That one I can't help you with. <laughs> Welcome to being a creator. I want to focus on those first, those middle two there. I'm too late. This is something I identify with because I started as a traditional filmmaker in the late 90s. I was in university. Guys like Robert Rodriguez, Kevin Smith, Quentin Tarantino, I was a huge fan of everything they had done in the 90s where they had made low budget films and they had just set the independent film world on fire. And it was amazing and inspiring. And I saw that and I said, I'm gonna do that there's a path to success, and I'm going to follow in it. But as you can imagine, a lot like what we're seeing today in online video, 
a lot of other people had that same idea. And they thought those pathways are set, and all they have to do is just walk along it in the same fashion. It's not the case. I was beating my head against the wall, basically. But at the same time, I was working in the tech industry in Austin at a dot-com company, and I was seeing this revolution in data where the internet became a viable residential product. And sure, we all had modems back then, and data sizes were really small, but everyone got an email address. And the moment everybody got an email address, nobody sent another postcard. Nobody wrote another letter. But you're not going to really notice a disruption in the postal industry. No one's going to no really gonna take note of that. You go forward a couple years, all of a sudden there's a decline in the print industry because people had faster transfer rates. They were reading blogs, they were reading news sites, and they weren't going to magazines and periodicals anymore. Go forward a couple more years to 2000, suddenly Metallica is in front of Congress talking about Napster. Everyone is suing them. We saw a decline in the audio, uh, the audio industry. It wasn't even really a decline, it was an absolute implosion of the music industry. And I was butting my head against this wall of getting my movie into film festivals and getting myself out there, and then I realized there's a better way to do this. I can go online and do this myself. There's a great quote, a very inspiring one from Steve Jobs. He talks about, you can't always connect the dots going forward, but you can very easily connect the dots going backwards. You just have to have faith that what you're doing will connect at some point in the future. I didn't know it, but at the time, that's what I was doing. I was immersed in both technology and media, and those two passions came together. I thought I was too late. I thought I was too late to the independent film world. But something came along, and I was able to take advantage of it because I was passionate about it. The other thing, everything's already been done. I get that, too, when people say that. But I can tell you, as someone who's had a career in media for 13 years and in technology for 20, it's not at all the case. At the vantage point of my career, I can see the cycles. I can see the ebb and flow as things rise and fall. What we all consider to be major pillars of our culture, things that would be like Facebook and Snapchat, even YouTube today, those things seem infallible, but they can fall off, and they often do. We're kind of wrapping up here, running out of time. Let me give you a clear example of that. We talked about it, the very early parts of the internet were those instant messaging and email. Instant messaging, AOL bought ICQ in 1997 for $250 million. At that point in time, I thought, okay, that's pretty much the whole instant messaging war is done at that point. What else can be done with, you know, I'm stuck in traffic, lol, better me than you, lol. I mean, you're not going to add anything to that. But there's been dozens of IM clients that have risen and fallen and been very popular over the course of the years. Just last year, Facebook bought WhatsApp, an instant messaging client, in 2014. They bought them for $19 billion. So if you can take one thing away from this very brief talk today, the feeling that you're too late, if you're a new creator, if you're too late to the game, or that everything has been done, all I can say is I can borrow a phrase from a previous media revolution and say, you ain't heard nothing yet. Thanks for seven minutes of your time. <laughs>